joyously bring Miss Sonia Brown to the podium with her inspiring message. Please help me to welcome her. Thank you, Miss Bess. Good morning, friends. And welcome. Let me add my own words of welcome to you. And let me thank both Jackie and Sharon for setting the tone of the service. And I just have to say my own words of congratulations to both Carol and Jennifer. My heart is as full as Reverend John's. Friends, this morning, my message, I've drawn heavily on the Bible and on a 20th century mystic, Joel Goldsmith, to bring you this message. Um, I, in thinking about the message this past week, I was trying to think about what, what to speak on. And I remember at my confirmation many, many, many years ago, I can't even remember who the bishop was. I know it was not Bishop Gibson. <laughs> It was an English bishop, but for the life of me, I can't remember who he was. But I remember he chose a, a verse from St. John about the comforter. And so I went back to St. John's Gospel, and I found the verses. So here goes. Now, shortly before his arrest by the Jews, Jesus the Master had what is commonly referred to as a final discourse with his disciples. During this discourse, he spoke with them about a comforter who would come to them. In the King James Version of the Bible, we read, and I shall pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And that's taken from St. John chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. Later on in the discourse, we find the Master Jesus telling his disciples, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. And that is taken from St. John chapter 16, verse seven. And in the same chapter, verse 30, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I believe that when Jesus was saying this, he was in fact encouraging the disciples to go within themselves in order to become spiritually discerning. He did not want them to be dependent on him for the various loaves and fishes, but to seek and to know and be consciously aware that the spirit of truth resided within each and every one of them, and they could access this truth themselves. It appears that he thought that his going away would force the disciples to develop a dependency on the comfort within rather than depending on him, Jesus the master teacher. I believe that even today, we are apt to become dependent on other persons and things, putting our trust in man whose breath is in his nostrils, rather than going within to source, 
our comforter and advocate for whatever we require. Now, who is a comforter? Two of the definitions taken from the Merriam-Webster dictionary are one that gives comfort and two, a person or thing that comforts. And also from the Merriam-Webster dictionary, we find the following definitions of the verb comfort. To give strength and hope, to cheer, and as a noun, a state of ease or well-being. From these definitions, we can infer that a comforter is someone or something that gives strength and hope, providing a state of ease and well-being. Therefore, if we believe what the Master Jesus was saying to his disciples, the spirit of truth within us is our strength and hope, able and ready to provide us a state of ease and well-being. How do we access this comforter, this spirit of truth within us? I believe we have to go within, become one with it, and listen to its guidance. In our teaching, we encourage the use of a form of prayer, which is referred to as affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment. This is a tool we use to remind ourselves of our oneness with God, the comforter. Affirmative prayer does nothing to God. God is already whole, perfect, and complete. So are we. However, because most of us have in some way become caught up and to some extent trapped in the things of this world, in the appearances and what Joel Goldsmith refers to as the universal mesmerism, we use spiritual mind treatment to correct this sense of separation from the Father within, the comforter. We use it to realign ourselves with spirit. You see, friends, the work is always in and on ourselves. This is why we can't afford to be dependent on anyone or anything, because it is always us. When this form of prayer is being taught, it is sometimes taught as a seven-step process, or as a five-step process, and sometimes as a three-step process. For this morning's purpose, I will focus on the five-step process. The five steps are commonly known as recognition, unification, realization, thanksgiving, and release. In recognition, we acknowledge the allness and wholeness of God as everything. In unification, we allow the awareness of our oneness with God to pervade our entire consciousness. In realization, we accept and embody the perfection of God within us. We realize the consciousness of the divine within. Quoting from Consciousness Transformed by Joel Goldsmith, the moment I am one with it, I am one with everyone on the spiritual path, and I am one with all spiritual grace, spiritual law, and spiritual life that is in the entire world. It is for this reason that you need take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on." End of quote. Fourth, the fourth process is we give thanks, and the fifth, we release. That is, we let go and let God. Drop all thought of how to. As Mr. Goldsmith puts it, clear out all thought of how you shall be healed, enriched, or how you shall be at peace with your neighbors." End of quote. I believe that the idea of stillness is embodied in the fifth step release. In letting go and letting God, we allow ourselves to become still and to wait for God's guidance. 
We do not attempt to manipulate or help God to do the work. We just remain free of the outer noises, trying to tell us what to do, and remain aligned with spirit to do its work through us. And here's another quotation from Mr. Goldsmith. The moment we have emptied ourselves and made room for the spirit, the spirit is there. When the spirit of God dwells in us, then we become the children of God. When does the spirit of God dwell in us? It has been dwelling in us from everlasting to everlasting. But from the moment of our acknowledgement of it, of our emptiness of self and realization of it, it consciously functions as our life." End of quote. Stillness, friends, is very important. Most of you will be familiar with a song which we sing here. It's called Be Still and goes like this. Be still, be still, in quiet and in peace, we know the joy and wonder of release. In the Father's house, all troubles disappear. In this secret place, there is no doubt or fear. Be still, be still. Unceasingly we pray, aware that love will guide us on the way. The truth has set us free to live in harmony. So it is, and so we let it be. When we become still, we refrain from physical and mental power and allow the Spirit of God to work through us. I would like to tell you a story which exemplifies the power of being still, going within, and waiting on the Lord. It is really an experience which a good friend of mine had recently. Here is her experience in her own words. I was all systems go as I rushed to the airport early that morning to send off my first sample shipment of dried herbs to the USA. I knew that protocol required that the herbs be fumigated by the Ministry of Agriculture before being expected by the USDA and then passed over to the airlines for the flight to New York. As time went by, I became increasingly anxious because the fumigation process was taking much longer than I anticipated. I needed to get all of the bags out of the fumigation chamber to have them weighed before I could complete the forms for the customs and airline personnel, and time was whizzing by. Periodically, the airlines called me to see how things were progressing because they had a cutoff time to have the goods documented in their system. I paced up and down as time went by and was now practically begging the guys who were dealing with the fumigation to get a move on because I knew that I was running out of time. Nobody gave the matter any urgency, as I seemed to be just another crazy female yapping and yapping and yapping. Finally, the bags came out, were weighed, and I quickly completed the relevant forms and literally ran to the MOA office to pay the cashier, and then flew to the customs officer to pay the duty. By now, the customs officer was also adding to my stress as she advised me that my any minute now she was going to lunch. <laughs> In the middle of the heightening drama, the airlines called to say I was running out of time. I assured them that I was almost through and was just minutes away from completion. Then came a second call from the airlines advising me tersely that they could wait no longer as they had to close the flight. You must be joking, I responded initially, because I knew that there was just no way that I was going to take my bags of lemongrass, guinea hen weed, etc., back home, and what of the many boxes of jackfruit which would undoubtedly ripe on me before the day had passed. The airline clerk assured me that she was not joking and that I was on my own. I asked to speak to her supervisor, who sounded really sympathetic, but tragic nevertheless, but said he would ask his manager if any discretion could be shown. 
He promised to call me back, but if the truth be told, he didn't sound very hopeful. At that point, I can only remember sitting in front of the customs officer while she perused my forms. I literally closed my eyes and went into a place of absolute stillness. Nothing could disturb me in that place. I found myself not asking for a specific outcome, but reminding myself over and over and over that wherever I am, God is. I can still remember the feeling of absolute calm that took over my being. I felt completely detached from the confusion surrounding the shipment. From the Caribbean Airlines personnel, nothing mattered at that time as I entered that place of calm and alignment with God. In retrospect, I imagine that the customs officer must have realized that I had entered another zone because she said that was not a word and quietly handed me back the completed forms when I opened my eyes. She would have sat quietly watching me as I sat with my eyes closed and waited for me to rejoin her. When I opened my eyes, I calmly took the forms from her and moved across to the desk of another officer who would, who would proceed to stamp the entry. In that moment, my phone rang. It was the Caribbean Airlines supervisor on the line. He told me that his manager had agreed to open the flight to allow me to get the shipment on. He asked me to focus on just getting everything completed as quickly as I could. When I dashed around to the holding area, Caribbean Airlines had sent across their forklift driver to help me to expedite the process. Everybody was now focused on assisting me to get the goods into the system and onto the flight. When I went to the Caribbean Airline office itself, the supervisor who had assisted me came to identify himself. I thanked him for allowing himself to be used as a channel on that occasion. He offered to help me to find a solution to the MOA delay during the fumigation on the day before so that my stress level could, would be reduced. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the, the re that resolution came inside of that moment when I sat in front of the customs officer. I have never been sure of the presence of God which was found in that stillness. End of story. In becoming still, and becoming one with the, source and with the source, my friend had made herself one with spiritual grace, one with spiritual law, and one with spiritual life. And in this total state of oneness, everything became divinely ordered and conspired to work together for good. Yes, friends, when we still the mind from the thoughts of the outer world, when we still the mind from the advice of well-intentioned friends, when we become still and ourselves to be empty vessels, then, as Joel Goldsmith puts it, you can know that there, that which is unknowable, see that which is unseeable, hear that which is unaudible. End of quote. Stillness is a vital part of release. We often hear the saying, treat and move your feet. I believe that this saying is many times misinterpreted. I think the tendency is to treat and then move our feet using rational thinking that is taking action along our usual line of reasoning instead of allowing spirit to guide us. I personally would prefer treat, listen, and then move your feet. You see, friends, it is of utmost important to listen and wait for inner guidance to know how to move your feet. I believe that the tendency is that sometimes in our haste to see the added things, we forget to listen to the inner promptings of the heart. But we need to remember that God has ways that we cannot fathom, and therefore, the need to listen to the still small voice. The inner guidance 
the spiritual guidance is most times completely different from the rational intellectual way of moving the feet. Wait, I say on the Lord, get your bloated nothingness out of the way. In her book, Embracing Truth in Times of Adversity, Reverend Marjorie Timberlake Linton says, in his humility, the blessed man acknowledges God as his only source, creator, and sustainer of all life, and affirms, I of myself can do nothing, but with God I can do anything, end of quote. How do we practice stillness? I believe that the practice of meditation helps us to develop the ability to be still. While there are different forms of meditation, it is a tool which we can use to assist us in developing spiritual consciousness to be in tune with the infinite. Regular daily meditation assists us to open ourselves to a state of receptivity to our infinite potential. We become more intuitive, that is, we know and we know that we know. As one writer puts it, be still and know is a clear command to let the mind rest from its own, activity, own activities and record knowledge that the infinite waits to reveal. Joel Goldsmith recommends setting aside a number of short intervals throughout the day and night for meditation. He says that in so doing, you are opening a line to God. And as this line is kept open, soon you will become aware that something new has entered your life and that for some unexplainable reason, a greater degree of harmony is evident in your experience. So friends, I would like to close with this thought. Wherever we are in consciousness, the Father, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth is always with us. As we still our minds to the outer and go within to the spirit of truth, we are guided into all truth. Quoting from Mr. Goldsmith again, we need only be still. We are aligned with a power that is not a power. We are achieving victory without force. We do not even use spiritual force, but our stillness permits spiritual force to use us. Ours is a refraining from power in a silence which thunders. I am God, therefore you be still and rest, for I will be with you unto the end of the world. You rest, relax, and be silent. Namaste. Namaste.